in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I praise God for you coming on, chiming in on our annual, or excuse me, our weekly uh, Bible study at Lily of the Valley Worship Center, uh, Church of God in Christ, and the city of Desert Hot Springs. Uh, what I love to say, and you often hear me say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Uh, I am glad to be uh, among the living on today. I am glad to be uh, in the hands of the Lord because God has been so, so good uh, to me. And I'm sure that he's been good to many of you. I am asking you today that uh, we'll be watching by live streaming. Uh, if you would share, which if you would share uh, with your uh, contacts that you have in your, your phone, uh, that they may be able to also view, uh, if not live, uh, view what we have to talk about on today or the word of the Lord on today uh, a little bit later. It's been a blessing. I want to thank you for chiming in uh, on Sundays and chiming in on also on uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, it's been a blessing. It has uh, inspired me even more, encouraged me even more uh, to preach this bloody gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that the Lord is uh, touching hearts, uh, touching minds, and I praise God uh, for his word. Uh, I am giving a few people opportunity to come on, uh, chime in, uh, tune in, however you want to say it. Uh, but I want to thank God. I see you there. Uh, Janelle, I see you, Jerica. Hey, Eric, what's up, Eric? How you doing, man? Love you, man. Uh, I can't say what we want to say, okay? All right. Uh, we praise God for you. Good to see you on here. Uh, but I, I just want to speak to your hearts uh, a little bit today and want to keep the church of God in Christ uh, in prayer uh, along with the rest of the world uh, as we have noticed that just on this year alone, this year alone, we have lost uh, or we've had 17 bishops transition and uh, notably uh, two general board members that has transitioned. Uh, these are persons that we love uh, along with many other, but we, we, we love uh, all, but uh, we know, notice uh, these are pillars of our church. And not only them, the other bishops that died, Bishop Gaylord, another uh, uh, pillar of the church, Bishop Glenn, and uh, I done made the biggest mistake you can make. I start mentioning names and I can't remember uh, all of them, but I, I do want to uh, acknowledge all the families that has been touched by the coronavirus and those that has been touched uh, uh, by COVID-19 and have lost their loved ones. Uh, and the, the bad part about it is that we're living in a time where we can't even give uh, them due respect of a wonderful home-going service uh, because of the gathering restrictions uh, that are uh, placed uh, in each state. But we do want to pray for the families and let the families know that we are definitely... Uh, praying for them. Uh, I see you cutting, Steve. All right. I, we are praying for them uh, uh, as we uh, uh, continue to rise every morning and just thank God for every day. And, and just to remember that God is in control. Uh, there's, there's no situation that God cannot handle. And every time that we uh, experience a transition, We've always got to remember that God is in control. All right. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my uh, redeemer. I praise God for uh, you. My uh, lighting is off just a little bit, but we're going to make it through because I don't want to get up out of my seat. God bless you, Bishop Derek Hutchins, my friend. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. 
Uh, I want to talk to you uh, on today concerning these words. God's promises great blessings to his people. God promises great blessings to his people. Okay. And I'm going from, uh, even if you want to get your Bible, if you want to run and get your Bible, uh, I'm coming from uh, Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Uh, Psalms 34. Okay. And Psalms 34 says these words. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. I, excuse me, oh, magnify. Yeah, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivereth them. God bless you, Brother Michael McCurtis. Uh, God promises great blessings for his people. But many of these blessings require active participation. We've just gone through what is called for us uh, one of the most holiest weekends uh, in Christendom. And we're talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But we cannot allow his death, his burial, and his resurrection to go in vain. Because even though the word told us about how uh, God, uh, his son, Jesus Christ, was going to go through uh, the various events that we've just described over the weekend. We understood the prophecy was uh, that Jesus was to suffer and go through some pain. Uh, God bless you, Dorothy Bowen and Linda Greer. God bless you. He was going to go through some pain. Uh, and it was fulfilled over this weekend. But now that Jesus has kept his promise, Jesus kept his promise. Now it is time for us to make that commitment unto him. Make that commitment unto him. So although uh, we have many promises from the Lord, uh, we, that we must have active participation. Okay, active participation. Okay, he will set us free from fear. This is what the psalmist is writing about today, that the Lord will set us free from fear. He will set us free from fear. He will guide and defend us. He will show us goodness. He will supply our needs. Listen when we are called, when we call him. He will also redeem us, but we must do our part. We must do our part. We can appreciate his blessings when we trust him. We can cry out to him. We can take refuge in him. We fear him. And when we do, we, we, we refrain from lying. We turn from evil. We do good. We search for peace. Sometimes we're broken hearted, but we can still serve him in the midst of it all. We can still serve him in the midst of it all. Why, why is uh, the Psalmist David speaking like this? Because uh, if you remember early in the scriptures in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, that uh, Abimelech, uh, what they had captured him and they were going to kill David and David went to praising God until spittle began to run down his beard. And when the spittle began to run down his beard, Abimelech looked at his men and said, why would you bring 
a crazy man to me. I got enough of them in my kingdom. In other words, that when we praise the Lord, we can confuse the enemy. We can make the enemy think we crazy, but all we are doing is praising the almighty God in the midst of a dire circumstance. We've got to praise him. We have to magnify him. We have to lift him up. So David said, I'm going to bless him at all times. What do you mean at all times? I'm going to bless him when it seems like my life is about to be taken away from me. My brothers and my sisters, it is so important. It is so important. Now watch this. Watch this. Why can David say this? Why can David say this at this time? It is important for us to build up our character for when trouble times come. Watch this. Let me say it again. It is important for us to build up our spirituality in God for when trouble times come. This is why so many pastors is, uh, uh, try to teach the people of God that while things are going good, go to Bible study. Go to Sunday school. Go to your regular church services on Sunday, Sunday evening. Go to the revivals. Go to the prayer meetings. Why do we do this? The old folks used to tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm sending up my timber. I'm sending up my timber. In other words, I'm building a, 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 I'm, uh, I'm, I've lost the word, but, uh, but, but I'm, I'm giving a reservoir. That's the word. I'm, I'm, I've got a reservoir of prayer. I got a reservoir of, of his word that when troubled times come, I'll be able to stand on the word that I received. I'll be able to stand on the prayers that I prayed. I'll be able to stand on the uh, many times that I fasted, the many times I had shut-ins. I'll be able to stand. God bless you, uh, Ashley. I see you. Uh, I'll be able to stand. You will be able to stand with troubled times come, but you have to make sure you prepare for the troubled times. David understood that. David understood that by being a little shepherd boy, when he took care of the sheep, David uh, uh, slew a lion. David slew a bear. Why did he uh, do this? He was taking care of what God had entrusted him to take care of or what the, what the sheep owner entrusted him to take care of. Why did he do it like this? Because there was going to become, come a time in his life where he was going to face a giant. Now, David didn't know that was coming, but but the Lord knew it was coming. And so the Lord allowed him to prepare himself for when a more uh, a, 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 a dangerous time in his life was going to come. My brothers and my sisters, this is why we are serving the Lord. We're serving the Lord, one, because we love him. One, we, 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 we reverence him. One, we fear him. He's our God. But we serve him because we were born to serve him. We were born to praise him. But while we're serving him, we're building ourselves. And while we're building ourselves, we're building ourselves for the great storms that's going to come in your life. I've never thought I would see a day like I'm living in today. But I'm in it. But I thank God that I built myself up in the Lord to the point that I do not fear these times because I know that God will be with me. So I can bless the Lord. I can bless him. I can praise him. I, it may seem crazy to the rest of the world. Why are you, on, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, you, you just don't know how good God is. I do. What do you mean? How, how do you know how good God is? Because the eighth verse of the 34th Psalm says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, I've tasted. I've come to find out that the Lord is good. 
The Lord is, he's better to me than I am to myself. And I, watch this. It says, this says, blessed in the man that trust it. E-T-H. That means continue it. That continues to trust God. And the more you continue to trust God, when calamities come in our lives, we can rejoice in the Lord anyhow. We have an Anyhow blessing. I got that from you, Bishop Derek Hutchins, that give God an anyhow praise, uh, anyhow blessing. Amen, somebody. So watch this. We've got to make sure that we bless God anyhow through any storm. We can sit back and praise him and give him the glory. The, the other day, the other day, last week, uh, I think it was last Sunday, um, uh, the wife and I were sitting in uh, 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 the, the room after, after service, and here in uh, the California area, we had a 4.9 earthquake, 4.9, 4.9. We, we heard it before it hit. It, 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 sound, it just went to rumbling, and we heard it before it hit, and, as, uh, and when it finally hit, I just hollered in the room, baby, you all right? She said, yep, and she looked at me and said, you all right? I said, yep, and we kept on going because we knew we could not do anything about that earthquake. Matter of fact, I was getting up to get some ice cream. I went on, finished getting my, I just kept on walking. I was shaking while I walking, but I went on, kept on walking, and get my, because I understand that God is in control. God is in control and whatever happens is going to happen. But when, when it does happen and it, it, it brings devastation to our lives, the one thing I can say, I live for him. I live for him. And I didn't wait. Watch this. I didn't wait to try to ask God to forgive me and, and God accept me as one of your children when trouble comes. But I, I serve him when things are going good. So when things start happening to another way, I can say I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises can continue to be in my mouth. So he says, watch this. Old taste and see does not mean check out God's credentials. Instead, it is a warm invitation. He is saying, try this. I know you will like it. When we take that first step of obedience and following God, we will discover that he is good and kind. When we begin the Christian life, our knowledge of God is partial and incomplete. As we trust him daily, we experience how good he is. Now watch this. And, and this is what, listen. Listen, I'm not against millennials. I love millennials, okay? I love all that come and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But I am saying to you, my, 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 my fellow brother uh, and sisters that are the millennial, I want you to understand that there is a level you have to go in God to be able to have the access you need to get through troubled times. Oh, and this is a time for those that have, have fasted, that have prayed, that know what shut-ins is all about, that know what casting the devil is all about. And what I mean, not just knowing by reading, but have experienced, have cast devils out, have seen people crawling on the, on the floor uh, like, a, like a snake, have heard them holler with a demonic uh, a voice and was able to pray that demon out, have watched them that were lame that came in the church lame and we prayed and the crutches is now on the wall have seen those that put the cigarette packet on the on the altar have brought their wine bottle and put it on the altar we know what it means to pray we know what it means to oh taste and see that the lord is good we have experienced no not just read about it we have experienced what god we oh taste and see we weren't checking out his credentials. He showed us his credentials. And Lord have mercy. Are we so glad that I got a chance to know him? I'm so glad. So what happens is after we receive, this is what just happened. The Lord Jesus died for our salvation. But now that we re receive the salvation, we must learn how to trust him daily. And the more we trust him and the more we love him and the more we love up on him, the closer we get to him, the better relationship we have with him. We're not afraid of troubled times. Matter of fact, we can magnify with trouble. Well, listen, tell me, let me, oh Lord, help me. That, yeah, I'm getting happy right here. My wife's going to get me in a minute, but watch this, that we will understand that, listen, 
if Jesus come today, listen, I see that, 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 that cloud begin to, 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 to open up. I'm going to shout, y'all. I'm going to shout, Jesus has come to get his children. Oh, yeah. I'm going to shout. Okay. So why? Because I understand that our God is awesome. Our God is awesome. He is awesome. Now watch this. He said, he says, oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints. Oh, not the Christians, but his saints. Ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Then he says in verse 10, the, the, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Lord have mercy. They're not going to want any good thing. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, you, you say you belong to the Lord, but do you fear him? Mm -hmm. That's the question. To fear the Lord means to show him deep respect, reverence, and honor. We demonstrate this attitude by, by, by uh, humility and genuine worship. Genuine worship. Okay, we have genuine worship, not 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 a not not one of those worships that just because the music is playing, uh, uh, just because uh, uh, the the organ is is, is going for we, we we that that's not a worship. That's that's just a praise. And the Bible even let let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And and, and they, my mother used to tell me that when you play music, even an elephant would dance when you play music. But when you get down on the deep the inside of you and you got that true worship, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. When you really feel that you are connected to God, there is a feeling on the inside of you. Let me say it again. There's a feeling on the inside of you that is totally different than any other feeling that you've had in your life. What are you, what are you talking about? Let's, let's go, let's look, let's go to the woman that touched the hem of his garment. Even Jesus understood that was a level of touch that surpassed any other touch out of all the people because the disciples say with all these people around you, how in the world you going to ask who touched me? That was a feeling that the virtue ran out. Listen, we want to touch Jesus to the point where the virtue runs out of him. Lord have mercy. Where he knows that somebody special touched me. That somebody that was in dire straits have touched me. And because they touched me, there's a healing virtue that's coming out of me into their body. God wants you to understand that he's there for you if you just touch him. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. At first, we may question David's statement because we, we seem to lack many good things, okay? This is a, not a blanket promise that all Christians will have everything they want. Instead, this is David's praise for God's goodness, all those who call upon God in their need will be answered, sometimes in unexpected ways. Now, now, let me tell you, that's the God I serve. That's the God I serve that will bless you in unexpected ways. They used to sing the song, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You may not always get it the way you want it, but God knows how to supply your every need. God supplies your need when you don't even expect it to happen. That, listen, you don't expect it, but look for it. Woo! What a word. What a word. Okay. You don't expect it, but look for it. Why? Because I trust him. I continue to trust him. Okay? And then, then you have to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If he don't do it, it don't mean he's not able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. He will supply our needs. He will supply our needs in unexpected ways. Watch this. Remember, God knows what we need. That God already knows what you need. He knew it before you knew it. All right? He knows what you need. He knows your needs. And our deepest needs are spiritual. Lord, help me. Watch this. Our deepest needs are spiritual. Okay? We're not talking about a, 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 a top surface relationship with God. 
because you have a top surface relationship with God. Uh, uh, even after that, watch this. You, it's easy, you know. It's easy to put Jesus on the couch and tell him, you know, I, you know. That's one of them folks that say, "I'm putting my Holy Ghost on the couch," and because I got a couple of things I got to do, and then I'm gonna come back and pick him up. No, you got top surface religion. You got a top surface relationship with God that, and you need to grow. Okay, I'm not saying that that you that you're not with the Lord. I am saying you need to grow. But if you keep doing that, you're gonna get out of the fellowship of God. Okay, but but you need to be able to grow in the Lord to the point where you're not laying your religion on the couch, but you'll be able to stand in the midst of your your adversities, the midst of being talked about, being slandered, in the midst of whatever is going on in your life, because you serve a God that's going to take care of you because he says, vengeance is mine. So our deepest needs is spiritual, spiritual. OK, spiritual, even though many Christians uh, face unbearable poverty, OK, and hardships, they still have enough spiritual nourishment to live for God. OK, we're going to still live for God. David was saying that if you have God, you have all you really need. God is enough. God is a supplier. God is our source. He is our strength. He is our everything. I want you to get that. Listen, because I don't want this, this last few days, the last week uh, to go in vain, even beginning back at, uh, at at Palm Sunday to go in vain. And then now we had Good Friday. Then after Good Friday, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't want it to go in vain because now that he died, you've got to take on the spirituality because he said, I will send back to you a comforter. He will take care care of you. He will help you. He will make help you grow. He will mature you because you are now a, a part of the family of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. You're part of the family. So if you're part of the family, hook into the family. Be nourished by this family. Be nourished by the almighty God because God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above, with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. If you feel you don't have everything you need, ask, is this really a need? That's the first question, okay? Second question is, is this really good for me? Third question is, is this the best time for me to have what? I desire. Now, now before I finish up, now, now, now look at this. It, because we, we as, as a people sometimes, we get our needs mixed up with our wants. And everything that you uh, want is not a need. But God will supply your needs. Oh, I'm a witness, he will. God will supply your needs. Needs. Yes, he will. Now watch this. Uh, is this is this is it really good for you? Now uh, it was it was uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Bishop T.D. Jakes. He uh, wrote the book. Can you stand to be blessed? All right. So so in other words, if God begins to supply your needs, is it good for you? not? Is it good for you? You have to be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. If God dropped a million dollars on you right now, if he dropped a million dollars on you right now, can you handle it? If he dropped a million dollars on you, how many Sunday mornings you going to miss? How many Wednesday nights or Bible studies you going to miss? How many prayer meetings you going to miss? Because now you got to make up for lost time. You got to go do this. I got to take the children here. I got to go do that. No, the more God gives to you, the more you ought to be indebted into, uh, uh, unto him because he will supply your need. So if you can't handle it, if whatever you asking for is going to take you away from God, then you need to Tell yourself you don't need it. Tell yourself you don't need it. Save yourself. You have to save yourself. Be honest with yourself. We say that every first Sunday, every first Sunday. Let a man or woman examine himself. Examine yourself and understand. 
that if you can't handle this, if what you're about to get into is going to pull you away from God, stay away from it. Then it is, is, is this the best time for me to have it? Is it the best time for you to have it? All right? So, Because sometimes, sometimes what we're trying to get not only breaks up your life, it breaks up families. It could break up families. It could break up loved ones. All right? It could do that. So is it, is it, is it really, it's really something that, that I desire? Do I, I need it? Do I need to have it now? Now watch this. Even if you answered yes to all these questions, God, watch this. God may allow you to go without to help you grow more dependent on him. Yes. He may want you to learn that you need him more than having your immediate desires met. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Let me try that again. God will, God will allow you to go without, uh uh-huh, where you can grow more dependent on him. See, the Lord cannot give to us, all of us, I won't say all of us, God cannot give to some of us what we need immediately. He can't do it, okay? Why? Because we won't grow, Mm mm-hmm. Okay, sometimes waiting, being patient as we're being patient, as we're waiting on God, it it allows us to grow in him. Oh, yes, it does. It allows us to grow in him. God, listen, listen, waiting, 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 waiting brings patience. And that is the one thing that many don't have today is patience. We live in a technology generation, okay? Uh, we microwave generation. Uh, everything is just right at our fingertips of, of what we need, and we get it instantly. But, but I often say, uh, 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 I'm so glad I have, a, I have a wife that can cook. I'm so glad she can cook. Yes, she can. Yeah. And matter of fact, if this coronavirus don't hurry up, I ain't going to be able to get out this door. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get out this door because she's just cooking up a storm up in here. But, but, but it's something about when uh, she has labored uh, over that oven and, and, and over the stove and, 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 and the food is, is cooked slowly and the seasoning gets all in it and, and as the season gets in it and, and it, it, it took a couple of hours to prepare that food, it's something different about that food than the one that's hit put in the microwave and in three minutes we're all done and you pull out and, and, and you're ready to eat. There's something different about that. I, I am saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, it's something that happens different in your life when you've had a chance to marinate in the Lord. You've had a chance to marinate in the Lord. The Lord has been able to saturate you with his love, saturate you with his peace, saturate you with all the goodness that he has. It's something special. It is something special. Hallelujah. Well, say hallelujah, somebody. Anyhow. All right. So watch this. He says, he says in verse 10, he says that the uh, young lion... Uh, do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing, shall not want any good thing. Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and love as many days that he might see good? Keep is thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. All right. Now watch this. The Bible, the Bible. And then it says, depart from evil. Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now the Bible often connects the fear of the Lord, which is the love and reverence for God with obedience. He says, fear God, fear God and obey his commands. Now watch this. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments that this is the whole duty 
of man. All right. And then he's watch this. He says, and all of those who love me will do what I say. According to John 14, 23, he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Hallelujah. Somebody help me say hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Hewlin Johnson. Uh, God bless you, sister, sister Loretta uh, Johnson. Now watch this. He says, David said that a person who fears the Lord doesn't lie. He turns from evil, does good, and promote peace. Let me try it again. He don't lie. <laughs> Turn from evil, does good, and promote peace. Reverence is much more than sitting quietly in church. It includes obeying God in the way we speak and the way we treat others. Help me, Holy Ghost. The way we speak and the way we treat others. When you begin to take on, if you go to Galatians chapter five, beginning in verse 22, you begin on to take on the fruits of the spirit. When you begin to take on the fruits of the spirit and as the Lord has uh, blessed you, then the fruits of the spirit become a part of you. You don't have to worry about doing evil. I, I like to say it like that. I, I, see, I like to try to make it as plain as possible. I try to try to make it as plain as possible. Now watch this. When we come to the Lord, when we come to the Lord, we're like, a glass full of dirt. Okay, when we come to the Lord, God bless you, Sister Erica. God bless you, Sister Brina. God bless you, uh, Regina. Uh, uh, listen, when we come, God bless you, Brother Joe Butts. When we come to the Lord, we are like a glass that's full of dirt. Okay? Get that image in your head. Glass full of dirt. Put that glass under the faucet. Turn on the water. Turn it on slow. And the more that water begins to go into that glass that's full of dirt, the more dirt that comes out of that glass. After a while, the, the, the water is going to become more clearer. And as it becomes more clearer, you find yourselves uh, 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 being more cleansed. Oh, yeah. And as you find yourself being more cleansed, oh, you help me, Holy Ghost. Then after a while, the glass is clear and all of the dirt is out. Now watch this. As long as it is under the faucet and the water is running, you're becoming more clean. I am saying the more that you're with Jesus, you're under the faucet of Jesus' Holy Spirit. And as you're more uh, uh, under the Holy Spirit of God, the more you become clean and the more you become clean, the more your spirituality grows and you can be used over and over again. Nobody, nobody that I know, nobody I know, I don't run with people like that. Nobody I know uses dirty glasses to drink out of. Nobody. Did you hear me? Nobody use dirty glasses. If that glass is not clean, they're not going to use it. But guess what? Every time the glass is clean, it has another opportunity to be used over again. Every, the more you are clean, the more God cleanses you, the more God can use you over and over again. Praise God. I like that. I like that myself. That, that sounded pretty good to me. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Some may think that peace should come with no effort. Okay. Some may think that peace come with no effort. But David explained that we are to work hard at peace. Oh, Lord, help us. Paul echoed his thought in Romans 12 and 18 when he said, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceable with all men. A person who wants peace cannot be argumentative and contentious because peaceful relationships come from our effort at peacemaking. Work hard at living in peace with others each day. You, you know, you have to work hard. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, especially in this day and time. You have to work hard to keep the peace. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to work hard to keep the peace. All right? Got to work hard. But guess what? It, it, the Bible tells us, blessed is the peacemaker, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Bless the peacemaker. God bless you, Brother Robert Johnson. Good to see you, man. God bless you. God, the, listen, the, the peacemaker. God, listen, it's not in. Listen, listen, I knew my problem before I got saved. I knew my problem before I got saved. Okay. And, and some say I still got it, but, but I ain't studying none of y'all. The Lord has really blessed me. brought me a long, long, long way. Okay. All right. Uh, I, and I had an angry problem. Okay. But, but, but because I love God, the Lord has been able to help me constrain that anger. All right. You can constrain it and become a peacemaker. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I ain't studying you, Joyce. I saw you. Uh, but watch this. The, I, the, 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 even though I have to help, I, 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 even though God constrain it, I also have to do something to stay away from it. Okay? I have to do something. So, so when I feel that part of me rising, I've got to get out of the atmosphere that is making it rise. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't get that. Y'all, y'all didn't get that. Sometimes you have to, I know, I know you the baddest thing on the block. Can't nobody whoop you. You've done, I mean, you know, you come on, bring, you know, bring your lunch, bring the kitchen sink and everything else. And can't nobody, I understand that. But when you, when you, when you come to Christ, you've got to put that aside. You've got to sometimes walk away. Not only walk away, Sometimes you got to run because you understand that your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing to you, that your relationship with him. So I'm going to live peaceable with all men as much as lies in me. And then when I can't do it, I allow God to do it and allowing God to do it. I'll be able to make it and be a peaceable person. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, I got to move on. I got to, oh Lord, I, I, this, this, this got so good. This doesn't got so good. Let me read here. Verse 15. He says, the eye of the Lord are upon the righteous and the ears are, up, are open un, uh, unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord uh, hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles. Now watch this. Now watch this. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Oh, praise God. Watch this. We often wish we can escape troubles. The pain of grief, loss, sorrow, and failures are even the small daily frustrations that constantly wear us down. God promises to be close to the brokenhearted and to be our source of power, courage, and wisdom, helping us through our problems. Sometimes he chooses, watch this, to deliver us from those problems. When trouble strikes, don't get frustrated with God. Instead, admit that you need God's help and thank him for being by your side. Oh yeah, you, we, we need to thank him because uh, trouble does come, my brothers and sisters, and sometimes it, it hits you unexpectedly. Uh, but when it hits you unexpectedly, just remember you got God on your side. And as long as you have God on your side, then you know everything is going to be all right. Sometimes we don't understand why God is allowing certain things to happen in our life. But he said that his ways and our ways is as far as the heavens and the earth. And because his ways is that far above ours, we're not going to understand God. Watch this. Listen, I, because I get it all the time. I'm a pastor. I know other pastors are on the phone. I mean, on the, on the live streaming. People come, pastor, why? Why? Can you please tell me why? They, they want a prophetess to tell them, tell me why I'm going through. They want a prophet to tell me why. Do you not know? Even Job didn't even understand why. 
And Job was a perfect and un, uh, upright man. It was better for Job to know God than to know the reason why. This is what we have to, it is better for us to know God than to know why you go through what you go through. Because the more you trust him, oh yeah, the more you trust him, the more he can deliver you, the more he can set you free. Because God is an awesome God. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Because I don't want you to think, uh, you know, I, I was, I, I'm, this is uh, n not no self-gratification, but but watch this. Uh, I, I love the Lord and I read the word, God's word. And verse 20 says, he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Now, you that uh, listened on Sunday as we was preaching uh, the, the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we talked about his, his hands be, uh, being nailed with those five to seven inch spikes through his hands. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. And, and as we were speaking about that, talking about there was no bones that being broken in his hand. There's 52 bones in your hand, 54 bones in your feet, and no bones was broken. It was already prophesied by the psalmist here that no bones in his body will be broken. Matter of fact, that when, when one was on the cross and crucified, they would break his legs. They'd break his legs where he couldn't, where, where he couldn't brace himself and pull himself up to get some air because now his body was sagging. His body was sagging and the, window, and the weight of his body was, was collapsing his lungs so he would lift up with his, with his legs and they would break his legs where he couldn't lift up. But, but, but they didn't do that to Jesus because Psalms said here, the book David said, he said, no bones will be broken in his body. There was no bones broken in our Lord and Savior's body and because the Bible was fulfilled. You could say that you have a right relationship with God. Watch this. God promised great blessings to his people, but many of these blessings require active participation. Active participation. My brothers and my sisters, after a lovely weekend, after a lovely weekend of celebrating our most high holy day, let's not let that go in vain. Don't let it go in vain. And even you that are believers, you that are the saints, you that love the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a time for us to cry loud and spare not. God wants us to speak up for him through his son, Jesus Christ. If I have a verse I have to go back to, I, I got to go back to verse eight. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth, trusteth in him. You got to continue to trust in God because he'll never, he will never, ever let you down. We may let him down, but he don't let us down. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. When you are with God, trust him to acknowledge him. Trust him to acknowledge him. Trust him and acknowledge him. Trust him and acknowledge him. God bless you, Sister Cheyenne. Uh, God bless you, Brother Todd, Todd Wheelock. God bless you. It, watch this. You have to trust God. You have to love God with everything that you have. But it takes active participation. Don't ask God to do things you can do. There are things you can do that God don't need to do. You just need to do them. But you've got to be an active participant in loving the Lord. It's not always easy. No, I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you it's always easy. That's not the truth. But if you trust God, God promises to bless you. God promises to see you through. I'm a witness he'll do it. And I know there's many of you that are watching on tonight is a witness that God will see you through. He will see you through. And, and I, I, as I close, I, I would, I'll, I, I'll always say to uh, the coronavirus, 
to the coronavirus. God bless you, uh, Bishop Steady Powell, Dorothy Bourne. God, uh, uh, the, the coronavirus. I, I, I was telling the wife one day, I think it was uh, when Pearl Harbor was bombed and that the Japanese general said, we have woken up a sleeping giant. Well, I want to tell coronavirus, you have woken up a sleeping giant. Do we say, we say, uh, oh Zion, what's the matter with you? You don't pray like you used to. We are now. You don't fast like you, we are now. And the word of God through the uh, various pastors or uh, various evangelists, women of God is being uh, broadcast to the millions now. To the millions, not just those that are in our uh, uh, in the comfort of our churches, but this word is going out to the millions. And because the word is going out, the coronavirus, in the end, we're probably going to say thank you because many people came to Christ. I'm going to use this opportunity to give you the opportunity if you uh, don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, that you can have a right relationship with him right now. And I want you to point your hand at that, uh, at your, uh, screen. at the screen. Okay. And I want you to, uh, either at the, the, your, your radio, no, well, not radio, Lord have mercy. I'm telling on my age. Uh, if you're on the conference call, <laughs> I want you to point your hands and repeat after me. Father, forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge my wrongs. I believe that your son, Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. And on the third day morning, God, the father has raised him from the dead. Now, Lord, I open my heart. I receive you into my heart as my personal savior. I receive greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And if you prayed that prayer with me and you believe that the Lord Jesus was buried and uh, he rose on the third day morning, then as of this moment, you're just as saved as anybody else that's been saved. You have accepted the Lord Jesus into your heart. And I want to say to you to find a, uh, a Bible-believing church in your area uh, that when this pandemic is over, that you find yourself in the house of God. Don't, don't allow uh, uh, this uh, live streaming mechanism, even though many will continue. I'm going to continue as even the churches fill up. I'm still going to continue to reach uh, the masses by uh, live streaming. But do not let this be your God. Find a church home because it is good to fellowship with the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ that can help you through your turmoils. So find a church home. If you need a church home and you're close to us, uh, that you want Lily of the Valley to be a part, uh, or you would like to be a part of the family of Lily of the Valley, just give us a call. 760-932-4260. Give me a call. And we will accept you right over the phone as a member of, as a, of, of, of the family of Lily of the Valley Worship Center. Okay, I want you to do that. I want you to do that because you're still going to need some feeding when this is all over, when it's all said and done. You're still going to need some feeding that you will grow in the Lord. And you can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. If you do not have a ministry, if you have a ministry, I want you to give your financial support to that ministry. I want you to bless uh, the ministry that feeds you, that pastor uh, that feeds you. I want you to bless that ministry with your tithes and your offering. But if you do not have a ministry to support, I'm going to ask you to support this ministry. And I want you to send that support. Uh, you can send it by cash app. Uh, it is the dollar sign LOV1779, the dollar sign LOV1779. Or you can go to our website, L O V, excuse me, www, excuse me, dot L O V W C dot org. Let me say it again, www dot L O V W C dot org. And just push the button for give. And we, we will be there for uh, you to give on the website. You go by Giblify. On our website is also Giblify. And you can go to Giblify. Look up Lily of the Valley Worship Center. And as you look up Little Valley Worship Center, uh, punch that and, and, and send your gift. Or you can just go straight by Giblify. Look up Little Valley Worship Center and be able to uh, give through Giblify. 
Also, you that are uh, may not be technology savvy, do P.O. Box. You know how to do mailing. P.O. Box 2363, Palm Springs, California, 92263. P.O. Box 2363, Palm Springs, California, 92263. You can give your gifts uh, in uh, those various uh, tools to be able to give. I'm asking you to love the Lord. I'm asking you to allow God to continue to do great things in your life. Do great exploits in your life. Let's not allow his dying to be in vain. Let's capture the world. Let's capture the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm closing with this prayer because we all need to be praying for our first responders. Let's pray for our first responders. Let's pray uh, for those nurses, those doctors that are uh, seeing death over and over again. Uh, can't go home to their loved ones uh, because they may spread uh, this virus at home. Can't touch their children because they may spread this virus at home. But we're going to pray for them as we close. And we're going to pray for our church as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I praise you for just being God. But God, I'm, we're asking you to look on our first responders. Bless them, oh God. Shield their minds. Shield their minds. Allow them also, God, to have a closer walk with thee. And as they have a closer walk with thee, they'll be able to do ministry. The ministry of help as they are helping those that are in need, those with the coronavirus, those with the COVID-19. God, we ask you to bless those doctors, bless those firemen and firewomen, police department, policemen and police women. I'm asking you to bless them, oh God. Lord, look on our church, the church of God in Christ. We have been devastated by the transitioning of leaders, and God wants you to bless them. Bless all the members of every denomination, every church, not only uh, the Church of God in Christ, but every church. We're losing those that have been pillars. But God, we say we're losing them, but they're never lost to you. But now it's time for us to step up and take the place and let the world know that for God I live and for God I die and we shall not change and that everything that our uh, fathers have taught us, we're now going to carry it on in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord be with you. Thank you for once again chiming in on our live uh, streaming. Well, until Sunday, Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Well, you will see me. I won't see you, but you'll see me on Sunday. Again, share this. Share this with as many people as you can. Share. And I praise God for you. God bless you. May the blessings of the Lord be with you.